Did you know that the number one reason for divorce is money? This is one of the many destructive events that come when a family doesn't live below their means. But there is a way to avoid this. We've created a simple frugal living five-step plan that anybody can follow so you can find out exactly how to live below your means and get financial freedom. Number one, creating a budget. The first step to living below your means and finding financial freedom is to actually know what your means are. The best way to do this is to create a budget. A budget is your expenses, which are subtracted from your income. When you're looking to find your expenses, you need to add up every single purchase you made in detail. This means that you need to find out how much money you pay for rent or mortgage, all your bills, like utilities, phone bills and internet, grocery bills for the month, and even times that you've spent clothing on personal items, costs of gas for your car or transportation, and any times you've even eaten out. When you've gathered all those things together, then you can see just how much you spend every single month and where most of your money is going. After you finish, the next step is to add up your income for the month. This is a much less time-consuming task, but it is essential to know what your means are. Your means are based upon the income that you bring in every month. To find out if you're living below your means, you then subtract your expenses from your income. And if that number ends up being a negative, then you're spending more than your means allow. If the number is a positive one, then you're spending below your means. But what if you are barely spending below your means and want to find frugal living tips to be more comfortable? Number two, pay off your debts. The second step is to live below your means by making sure that you pay off all of your debts. When you've created a budget, any debts like credit cards, mortgages, leases, and more should have been accounted for. All these expenses are loan-based, meaning that you have to pay back what you owe with interest on top of it. This is the most debilitating expense for any family looking to live below their means which is why it's most important to pay them off first. If you're looking for an effective way to be able to divide your finances focusing on debt, then think of using the 50-20-30 rule, where 50% of your income is for general necessities, bills, rent, groceries, etc., 20% for debt payment, and 30% for personal means. Of course, this can be altered for various needs, like changing your debt repayment to 30% and your personal means to 20%. Step three, working on cutting unnecessary expenses. It is likely that you found some expenses in your budget that you might deem unnecessary. For example, you may find out that you're eating out twice a week and that takes close to $120 a month. Another example could be that you buy $45 worth of coffee at your favorite shop every month. Fortunately, there are several frugal living tips that you can do in order to make up for cutting back on your favorite meals or coffee. For instance, you can learn to make your own favorite takeout meals at home. Most meals bought at restaurants can be priced towards as four times as much as it is making at home. Another frugal living tip would be buying your favorite coffee in ground beans and making it directly at your house. This will no doubt be a lot cheaper than buying it at your local coffee shop. Step four, finding ways to minimize necessary expenses. After you've cut all of your expenses that you were feeling were unnecessary, then you can start finding ways to cut down on costs that you need to make every month so as to live further below your means. For example, you may find that some items that you need to buy every month at the grocery store is a little expensive. An awesome frugal living tip would be to look out for coupons on items that you use so that way you can lower the amount that you end up paying. Another example would be finding ways to lower your mileage on your car. For starters, if your workplace is close enough, then try walking or riding a bike to work. If that's not possible, then consider making the change to public transit, like a subway or a local bus, or even carpooling, so that way the expenses of gas can be divided among people. It's necessary to find ways to cut costs wherever you can so as to truly live below your means and find financial freedom. Step 5. Find ways to increase your income The fifth step to live below your means is to start focusing on ways to increase your income. After you've completed the first four steps and you're looking to get an extra edge on your financial freedom, then finding ways to bring in more money is the next best step to take. The simplest and most effective way to be able to increase your income is to start working on different income streams. One way to do this would be to start investing your money through a broker. Now, there are several apps that have pre-made portfolios made by professionals, and all you have to do is simply put in a set amount of money every week and watch it grow. These portfolios tend to grow a lot quicker than regular savings accounts, so they're often used to grow income quickly. Another way is to sort of side hustle. If you got a hobby that you're passionate about, then you can start selling those services that are associated with it. For example, if you're a great musician, you can start creating royalty-free music or selling freelance services. By having a much larger income, you'll be finding yourself having financial freedom in no time.